Hi, this is attorney Nicole Christie from the Christie Law Firm, where we work hard to make families stronger. So today I wanna to talk to you about the reunification process. And I wanna take it from really the parent's perspective. You know, we as lawyers, we can be very objective and I will give some objective advice about this, but I wanna kinda of go through some of the emotions, some of the thoughts, some of the feelings and things that, you know, I see parents actually experience just so that you yourself can be prepared for that part of the process. And my goal in doing this is to not make you afraid, but to really try to educate you so that if you should find yourself in a position where DCF has removed your children, that I have information that I've given to you that will help you get through this process and most importantly, get your kids back. We do have some other videos around the whole reunification process. I talked to you, you know, from a very, um, legal perspective but this one i kind of want to you know talk to you about some of the things that i've seen parents experience and thoughts that come up at different stages of the investigation and so the first stage that i want to talk to you about is the actual removal that is probably the most traumatic for everyone involved sometimes even for the dcf worker when i was a dcf worker one of the worst things that i had to do was to remove a child it was heartbreaking for me it was tough for everybody involved and so i realized that that is probably one of the parts that is most traumatic you know you are going to be afraid you are going to be concerned because nine times out of ten you're not sure what's going to happen you hope the kids will go to a relative sometimes that happens sometimes it does not and also keep in mind that if you've got friends close friends or even friends that are just you know, friends and people you know that are willing to take your children, don't hesitate to give DCF those names. You want to try to keep the kids with somebody that's familiar to at least you or to them because that is helpful. But it is a very scary time for everyone involved. If DCF is at your home and they're literally taking the kids from your home, try your best in that moment to focus on the kids just that moment you are going to cry you are going to be mad you are going to throw things as well you should you should do all of that but don't do it in front of the kids this is going to be traumatic for them especially they're not going to be able to sleep in their home they're not going to be able to be with their clothes and most importantly they're not going to be with you so you want to focus on the kids in that moment try to be as calm as possible and i know it sounds crazy to say that but the more that they can see you be under control the more that they'll be able to walk away from this saying okay it's gonna be okay I'm gonna go back home soon and they can have a little bit more confidence versus it being so traumatic because they've seen you cry and scream and the police are involved so you want to try to approach the actual removal as calmly and as, as collectively as you can when the kids are out of your sight that is when you cry that is when you scream that is when you you know punch them things or you know punch a wall don't punch a hole because you don't want to be in trouble but you know do what you have to do to get all of that emotion out seek a counselor do whatever you have to do so that when you do see the kids again that you have yourself as calm as composed as possible you know, when you're on the airplane and they do those instructions that half of us try to sleep through. But, you know, one of the things they always say is put your mask on first before you try to help your child. And it's because you don't want to pass out and not be able to put the mask on your child. And so it is just as important that while this is going on, you have to take care of yourself. Because if you don't, you won't be in a position to be able to really help your children through this process. They're going to be traumatized to the extent that they won't be with you. They won't be in what was familiar. Sometimes they have to change schools and none of this is you know, something that they could have planned or did anything for this to actually happen. But it's so important that as a parent, you allow this removal process to be 
you know, something that at least it's not as bad as it can be for the kids. And so again, it's enough that they've been removed, but do everything in your power to prepare them as much as possible. Even if you've only got five minutes to say, you know, you're gonna go with this nice lady, even if she can't, can't stand her, but do whatever you can to let them know that, hey, you're gonna go with this lady. Um, I'm gonna see you really soon. We mommy and daddy have some things to work out or mommies have some things to work out or daddies have some things to work out. Whoever is their caretaker, we've got some things to work out and we're gonna get you home as soon as possible. And in the next couple of videos, we'll talk about what are the rest of the processes and again, some of the thoughts and emotions that you might deal with. So if you ever find yourself having to deal with a removal, try to get through that, that moment as best as possible. Let your emotions out again outside of the presence of the kids and then you know do your best to try to assure them that you're going to get them home as soon as possible if you need any further assistance we have some other videos or you can contact our office we're here to help as best we can take care